So, just another quick video about Virtual DJ updates and auto updates and my strategy when it comes to updates. So, you control the auto updates uh, using two settings in Virtual DJ. So, let's look into those. They're here, they're both in the internet section, and they are check updates and early access updates. The updates, uh, this one up here, that's the public uh, releases, so those are the ones that will also be on the, the download page on the Virtual DJ website. And the early access updates are the ones that comes out previously for like a public beta, uh, if you want, so that you can test what's coming or you can get quick fixes if something is wrong that you know that has been fixed in the next version. So uh, that's all good and fine, but what do you do uh, uh, in actual real life when you also want your, your virtual DJ to be as stable as possible. Well, for me, I don't enable any updates uh, on my Geek Machine. So I don't want the pop-up, I don't want uh, to know about the update, I don't want to know nothing on my Geek Machine because that's the one I want to run the smoothest. So I want to know exactly what's running on that and I want to have it tested. So that's like a Monday thing, so you can test like a few hours before using it the following weekend. So on my Geek Machine, on my Geek Laptop, that's set to no and that's set to no. No updates, no early access updates. Then there's my backup laptop for gigging. I often set that to updates, check updates, so I can update it. Uh, first of all, I, I, I know when, when it's happened, when there's a new public release, and I can then auto update it uh, and get the latest features. Also because if something that I don't know about has actually been fixed in the latest version, uh, and I'm at a gig and I bump into the issue, then when I switch to my backup laptop, it will have been fixed. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, it probably uh, won't be in a situation where, where it's introduced a new thing that I haven't tested yet, that, uh, that happens on the same night that something happened with my primary laptop. So I think it's okay to have the updates uh, the, for public releases running on my backup gig laptop. Then there's early access updates. Those I have only enabled on my test laptop, so a third laptop, that whenever something new happens, I just get, uh, throw it into my test laptop and I check the release notes, we'll get back to those, and then uh, I can start testing the, the things that's coming. But just to go through them again, for my Geek laptop, that is not set and that is not set. No updates, I want to know when I'm updating uh, and, uh, and I want to know that I have time to test it before using it on my Back up laptop, I put in the early access builds, uh, no, sorry, the uh, the public releases, and then on my third laptop, my test laptop at home, I put in everything that's coming out. So that's actually three laptops, so isn't that a rule that you can only put virtual DJ on two? No, you can actually put virtual DJ on as many laptops as you like. That's all uh, legal within the license. Uh, you can just only run it on two laptops. And you don't even have to worry about that, because when you sign into a third laptop, uh, it'll sign out of the first laptop, if you will. So there will always only be two laptops uh, that sign into the license. So that'll just kind of uh, solve itself, so you don't have to worry about that too much. So uh, what if you only have one laptop? What if you? I have three. I actually have four laptops for this stuff. Uh, so what if uh, you only have one? Well, then I, I think you should actually work with having multiple licenses, sorry, multiple versions installed. So how do you do that? Well, if you look at the, here, this is the program files. So this is actually virtual DJ program. It's in program files, virtual DJ, or if you're on a 32-bit ver version, like a Windows 7, uh, Windows 7, it'll be program files 32, 32-bit, 32 and then virtual DJ. So while Virtual DJ is closed, so we'll just close this down. I can then go into the exe file here and rename it. For instance, call it 6677, which is the current version. And it'll change the name. So now I don't have any Virtual DJ. But if I then download a new version, for me here, this is a Virtual DJ download page. That'll always be the latest version, so that's where I get the latest version, including when updating my Geek Laptop. And then just uh, click the one that's there. That'll always be the one that matches your, win uh, your Windows version. So because I'm, I'm on Windows 10, 64-bit, 
it'll be the 64-bit version. If so if I were on a Windows 7 laptop, it would be a 32-bit version. Then I just click that, and then I get the new install file. And then what you do is just simply run the install file on top of what you already have. Just give it a few seconds to finish the download. And then 85, coming up, there you go. So run that. And of course, to get the normal installed, but because I already have this version on here now, that will normally not be the case because that was what I already had. I'll get this repair function instead because that, well, you kind of already had this version. So what's happened? Well, I accidentally broke it because I removed the uh, the, uh, the exe file. Well, I renamed it. So just repair it. Um, but normally you'll just get a normal install. So I click repair, repair. Yes. And then when I switch back to this, you see I now get the virtual DJ exe file again. So now I have my uh, my previous version here, which I have actually have a couple of others, but I have my previous version here. I can still run that perfectly fine. Uh, so uh, I still have uh, that running that I've already tested, and I would that's probably what I would be using at Geeks if this was the Friday night. And this is a new version that's ready to run. So you can simply have more than one installed. So um, that's that's, that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, so I, I always have multiple ones installed just for the sake of it, so I can go back and forth, just opening them, and I'll get different ones. For instance, you can see if I click this one down here, and go into settings, it's the 6585, an old version that I can still run if I want to. So how do you actually get these different versions if you want them, if you want to handle this manually, like, like I'm doing on some of the laptops? Well, you do that on the web page. It has a download page. So if you go into support and the wiki page, then the bottom right will be download previous builds. So that's where you get it. And in here, you can see all the previous builds that you can get, including early access builds. That'll be here too. It'll actually be mar marked early access, but because uh, there's no early access right now, that's the same as the public build, then there's not none of those. But these are all the previous builds that are still available. And like I mentioned earlier, you can see what's happening with each one of them. So in the change locks, you can see, well, this is a new standard uh, public release. So 6677. So you can see the fixes and new features. Uh, I did a, a video on this search folder new feature uh, yesterday. And you can see the, the one before that was uh, last month. It was the 6646. Before that, it was the 6613 back in August and the 6541 back in July, and so on and so forth. So those are the public builds, but you also have access to the early access builds in here. So you can just go get those, if you like, uh, without having to use the, uh, the the early access feature in the software. You can just go get them whenever you want them. So you can see there are a lot more of those, and uh, not all of them make it to be the public release. So you can see the uh, the release uh, the, the locks for the different releases uh, that was early access releases at some point. And of course, the top one up here will be the current early access releases, if there were any, but that's not right now. So this was basically just a go through on how I, how I have my strategy for updating, so, and for auto updating. So on my kick machine, no auto updating at all. On my backup laptop, um, I have uh, the, the standards or the, uh, the public releases, the one that's the one that's also on the download page, enabled, and on my test laptop at home, I had all of it enabled, including the early access builds.